So I like the music, I don't know about you, but I get jamming right here in the studio, surrounded by all these amazing plants. Hello and welcome to The Builders Live. It's 11 o'clock, what month are we in? I don't know, but I don't know, everyone goes, Hey guys, and you here? Did you hear this morning? No masks. <clears throat> no masks. I, so, so like the latest thing is, so what are we going to do with all the masks? Well, I personally, I'm going to use them to hang up my orchids. Um, I probably am going to use them uh, in some pots, like as drainage. Um, yeah, I don't know. I could possibly also wrap them around trees and maybe spray paint them. I don't know, but I'd love to hear from you. I'm sure that you have, have also thought of some things that you could do with masks. Um, I don't know about those big ones that make me look like Dark Vader, but... But I mean, I can't even breathe in those things. I'm talking about like the blue ones with the ears that make my ears go like that. Yeah, you, know, you see, they're just not suited to me. Anyway, so um, yeah, we got a mask issue. Um, it's been quite chilly. Uh, Port Elizabeth, down there, you're in, oh, there's a word. Yeah, it's really bad. It, it's, it's, it's really bad down there. Um, we are praying for rain. Um, we really, really are praying for rain for you guys. Um, but today is an exceptionally exciting live. It is all about indoors. Um, so guys, if you are the plant killer, if you are a first time plant parent, if you are an experienced botanical boss, we've got something for you um, in this live and we're going to go through it step by step and help you out. And remember, whatever I don't get to answer, during the live, um, we will answer you a little bit later, uh, once we've packed up. Um, so that'll be later this afternoon or early tomorrow morning. Uh, but most importantly, if you are tuning in, um, guys, we have got something that we've never done before on a live. We are giving away... Mason, come with me. Come, come, come. I'm bringing the cameraman round. Come with me. Shoo, look, 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 look. All of this is going to be given away today to one person. One person. There is going to be a question, of course, and it's going to be like one of those TV shows. Quickest fingers to the buzzer, but in this case, it's quickest fingers on the keyboard, um, or whether you voice prompted or Siri, or I don't know how you work, um, but it's going to be the first question, the right answer that comes through, the first right answer. We are going to announce it right here today on the live and guys yeah i know i was quite i was quite sad envious when we put this all together because i could do with this big lopper i mean this thing could take out like serious stuff there's a beautiful hedge trimmer there's another lopper uh, there's a three-tier grow house there's spray bottles there's a host pipe there's seeds there's tools there's oh, it's up. <laughs> yeah uh, maybe I can answer the question too. Okay, but anyway, right, guys, let's see who's here. Um, let's see who's having a chat with us today. Uh, let's see who's online. And guys, and first of all, I've locked myself out my computer, which happens very often. And I don't know about you guys and passwords. <laughs> Come on, tell me I'm not the only password challenge creature in this world. <laughs> you know? There is, there's a password for this and a password for that, and then it makes it, you've got to change it every few days. I mean, goodness, I don't even sometimes know where I put my pajamas. How am I meant to remember new passwords? Um, Nicole, yes, wow, amazing. It's, it's an amazing prize. It's an amazing prize. And the guys from Builders are going to get it directly to your door. Isn't that even more exciting? Right. Um, good morning, Tandeka from Peter Maritzburg. Heidi, good morning. Oh, you're from St. Bai in Hermanus. Yeah, praying for you guys in PE. We need rain dancers, guys. We need lots of rain dancers. Um, Janice Witten, good morning from Melvin. Fran, Terry, um, if you left your bikini at home, <laughs> if you left your bikini at home, tie two masks together. It makes a great bra. Oh my God, I am not showing you that. I know what you're thinking, but negative. I am not showing you that. But I quite like the way you're thinking. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm not even going to go there. My far side brain is kicking in. Because um, uh, I, I, I see things in pictures 
And uh, when I see a picture, then I can't stop laughing. So I am avoid I'm taking my mind off that image immediately. Right. Uh, Pam, good morning from a freezing pulse off. Yes, it has been chilly, guys. And I hope that you've got your frost guard out and that you are protecting those plants that are susceptible to frost. Um, Janine, good morning from a cold and wet Cape Town. Yeah, you guys have certainly had lots of rain. Um, Chrissy from a very wet Cape Town. Uh, Janine as well from Cape Town. Vanessa, uh, <laughs> you could have a bonfire with the masks. Well, yes, you could. But, you know, I'm thinking of, like, way more practical uses. Remember after the World Cup? Remember the World Cup? Man, we were in the spirit. There I was jiving to Shakira on the beach. Um, I had like face paint on. Next thing when South Africa were out, I was an orange. I was supporting the Dutch and I was orange and head to toe, including wig. Um, ooh. But there were items that were left behind after the World Cup. And come on, what is it? Vuvuzelas! Remember, we all had vuvuzelas. You, you remember those, yeah. So we did a whole gardening story on what to do with vuvuzelas, um, from using them as a watering can to planting them up um, to digging them in next to a tree. And, you know, when you make, when you've planted a new tree to, uh, to give it a great watering deep into its roots. Oh, we came up with all sorts of things. So I think um, I'm going to challenge my editorial team um, to come up with 10 ways um, and Wendy and Anna, I hope that you are watching. Um, 10 ways of how to use a COVID mask in the garden. Loving it, loving it. Um, Adele, good morning. Eve, good morning. Um, let's see who else is here. Do I go to one or four? Oh, never mind. Um, Bronwyn, good morning. Reza, Melanie, Gabby, um, Oh, I'm not sure. Gabby, you also have the password dilemma. Oh, hallelujah, amen. Okay. Um, Elise, good morning from Rusterberg. Wayne, hello. Good to have you with us. Um, really need that prize for my new greenhouse. I know, I know. That three-tier greenhouse is wicked. Um, uh, Kathy watching from Melbourne. Melbourne in Australia, I guess. I guess. Um, Daphne. Um, after this rain, I'm heading to do some gardening. I hear you, sister. Um, I'm right with you there. I'm right with you. Um, who else is here? Melanie, Bronwyn, um, Yvonne. Guys, loads of you with us this morning. So, um, And those that um, you need to tell, you must quickly just WhatsApp them, multitask, tell them to get on um, so that they can stand in line to win this amazing prize. Yep. Okay, guys, we're talking indoor gardening, indoor jungle, first-time plant parents, plant killers, mother-in-law's tongues, name of a plant, cast iron plant, name of another plant. Um, the, the cheese plant, is that right? Yes, the pancake plant, all these common names that come through. And um, yeah, they, they're good because we at least get to know what they are. And the plant explosion, the indoor plant explosion, was kind of heading chucking up the hill, up the hill before COVID. And then all of a sudden, when we became prisoners in our own homes, it exploded. And um, that is one thing that I can be grateful for this pandemic for. I, I can. Um, and I think you can too. Because all of a sudden, we have been encouraged to surround ourselves in our homes and our offices with beautiful plants um, that add joy, bring life, um, colour, texture, um, and most importantly, it's an investment. Yeah, I know, I, okay, I, I know some of you kill them quite quickly, um, but after today, I'm hoping that um, this won't be the case. All right, so let's get started with if you are a beginner plant parent. If you are one of those people that kill things, okay, I kill you! Do you remember where that's from? No, Ahmed. Ahmed. Okay. okay. Everyone's giving me very strange looks. Right. Um, if you are one of those plant killers, um, I'm going to give you three plants that you will not kill. If you kill one of these, I will eat my hat. Okay? You will not kill them. So come along with me here, and I'm going to show you what they are. Now, first one 
is what we call the mother-in-law's tongue. Now, oh, they could have given it another name. I mean, honestly. But now, these guys are actually all indigenous. Um, a lot of them also coming from Madagascar, because remember, indigenous is below the equatorial line, below there. So it's it, so there's indigenous to South Africa, and then there is a broader term, indigenous. Um, so many of them come from our part of the world, um, and they are, they are so tough. They are so incredibly tough. There are hundreds of genus in the species, and we have found beautiful new varieties that the clever plantsmen have been able to crossbreed and, and cross-reference. Um, but guys, they, they are, I, I love them. I, I have always loved them. In fact, I've got a little collection in one little wee corner of my succulent house, uh, which I've been collecting for years and years. So when Sansevierias did become, you know, flavor of the month, um, I was quite excited. But um, I'm going to show you the state of this mother-in-law's tongue that is in this pot to give you an idea of how tough they are. I'm not going to reveal whose plant this is. It's not mine. Neither is, is it Isolde's. It could possibly be our daughter's. Possibly. Which is why it's a beginner plant. So, exhibit A. Let's look at this creature. Dust. Watch here. It's like, look, look how dry the soil is. Look here. Look, it, it's even pulled away from the pot. I shame you know. I you know. Look at it. Look at it. It is dry as a bone. Dry, dry as a bone. I mean, there we go. There we go. And it's still alive and kicking. Guys, so so this is the mother-in-law's tongue. Probably something to do with mother-in-laws that they hang out there for a long time in your relationship. I never said that. Um, anyway, so this is Sansevieria. This is the mother-in-law's tongue. Guys, you get beautiful colors. I mean, there's a golden one available at the moment at your local builders. Um, there's um, beautiful dwarf ones. They're ones that they call elephant toothpicks, which they're only this big, they're nunu, and they've got lots of these, yeah, like a, like a toothpick. Um, they, they're called cylindrica, Sansevieria cylindrica. Now, a couple of cool things about this plant is number one, you can split it and divide it. And um, so you can make more um, because it's really easy. And literally, you just take this guy and you will break it up like that. Sorry about that. Um, these leaves, you can actually grow. These leaves, you can actually grow these leaves. You can take this leaf as is, you can shove it in the ground, okay? Into a pot with a bit of potting soil. Or oh, you can get one up on that. And all you do is cut it like that, okay? There we go, you see where that mark is? Bury it up to there in a bit of river sand or a good potting soil mix and you'll get babies. Nice and easy. Okay, so very easy to divide. Uh, honestly tough as nails. And you can take these leaves and pop them into some water um, as a decor item or objet in your home. And they will last... Uh, probably, probably six months, at least, it, six months, right, okay, so splitting and dividing is really easy, we'll deal with this little creature a bit later, um, and, um, <laughs> but uh, there's your mother-in-law's tongue, guys, and uh, a completely indestructible plant, completely indestructible, right, the next one um, I want to talk about is this, now, this plant used to be incredibly popular in the early 70s. Um, this guy over here is called, <laughs> because you can't kill it, the cast iron plant. It's called an aspidistra. Um, in old gardens, if you went to your granny's garden, your gogo's garden, you would find one of these somewhere in the garden, or you would have found it on the, on the stoop, on the stoop next to the maiden hair fern that was fed birth control pills. Yeah, they used to do that in the olden days. Okay, I don't recommend it today. Um, and the, the aspidistra is incredibly tough, folks. Um, got a beautiful leaf. 
can grow in incredibly low light. So these can cope in low, low light, like where there's nothing, like in that corner, that corner where everything dies. You can put this or you can put this there. Of course, the other one that we all know is the peace lily. Um, the peace lily is beautiful. I, I really, really like the peace lily. Um, it needs a bit more light than these, okay? It needs a medium light. And if yours is not flowering, there are two things that could be the issue. Number one, it needs more light. Number two, the guy's hungry. He needs more food. Um, so there are three Kani Duetnis. Um, and I'm going to get on to a bit of maintenance and stuff a little bit later um, with these three guys. Okay. Now, um, the next thing I want to talk about is colors and patterns. Because, you know, they're not any green plants. Oh, no. Um, the colors and textures that we have um, today and, and from our choice is just spectacular. Um, so, so many different colors. And, and I want to talk very, very briefly and introduce you to some plants which you might not have seen or noticed or even tried your hand at. And all of these are available at your local builders. Number one, a plant that has made such a comeback there are plant groups for them. There are clubs, okay? Um, people who collect them, and that is this beauty here, and it's called a hoya. Now, a hoya is also one of those old-fashioned plants. It's actually a creeper, but when you put it in a pot like this, obviously it creeps downwards. If you had some trellising or little stakes here, it would then go up. Um, if you've never seen what a hoya flower looks like, I suggest you Google it. Because when you do see what it looks like, you'll want one. It's got clusters of beautiful wax-like flowers that almost look artificial. That they, they, they look artificial. And they create little, little beads of, um, of sweet nectar that are pushed out from the flowers. It, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's quite beautiful. My late mom had one in her, in her what we called her shade house where we grew up. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget a Hoya because they really are beautiful. Lovely patterns. And remember, so when it's not flowering, we've still got the attention to detail, the stimulation, the beauty of the variegation. Remember, guys, as a rule of thumb, anything with a variegation means it generally needs more light. Okay, so don't go stick it in that dark corner. Okay, it's not a mushroom. So anything with a bit of variegation, I'm going to repeat it, needs a bit more light. Whilst what you will find is the plant will have to adapt. The plant will have to say, guys, there's no light here. And what happens is the variegation gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Or else, like a ficus, which is one of these guys. I don't know if we're going to get around there. Um, no, no, no. I want to show you this, this one here. This ficus. Variegated ficus, if you've ever bought one of these and put it in your house and you woke up one morning and it looked like it just like had a shake and all the leaves are lying on the floor, that's because it's not getting enough light. Okay, it like, it's like shaggy dog, you know? Okay, so it's light, that's what they need. Okay, back here, back here, back here. Um, right, other beauties. Now these have become very, very in vogue. These are called calocaceas. I think that the common name is also arrow, arrowhead or something. Yeah, I, I know the botanical name. Sorry, I'm very bad at some of the common names. But look at that. I mean, that's like, that's silver. That is absolute silver. Isn't it spectacular? Um, yeah, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. These are peperomias. Um, Peperomias, and, and did you know they're actually edible? Um, my Gracie child loves eating peperomias, and so does Rolo. They bite the plants, literally, so they are slightly high up in our, in our household. Peperomias and your calocasias do not like too much water. Allow them, and this is a general rule for most indoor plants, allow them to just dry out a little bit before you rewater. Okay, over here we have calatheas. Calatheas, also many different patterns, beautiful colors, um, 
and you get them in so many different varieties now from this guy over here to look at this beautiful pink I mean that's our candy pink isn't it beautiful yeah that's that's seriously candy pink with flecks lovely now these are called marantas marantas have also come back into fashion and like like speed of light and it's the detail look at this detail guys look at that detail in the leaf and when you stop and I urge you to stop and pause look at that red lime green fading out undersides there is so much beauty just in these guys and of course one of the plants that we admired and drooled over when we were fortunate to be overseas a couple of years ago um, was the black ZZ plant. Ooh, everybody wanted a ZZ plant and they were paying hundreds of thousands of rands. I kid you not for a ZZ. Well, we now have ZZs here in South Africa. Um, it's black. Um, it's, it's botanical name is Zamniocaulis Zamniocactus. Stop swearing at me. Um, it's, it's an amazing plant. And I could actually put Zamio kind of with the, with the cast iron plant because it's as tough. Forget about it. Don't water it. Only water it once a month if necessary. Um, forget about it. It does not like too much water because in here is a bulb. There's a bulb in there that stores the water. Um, so Zizi, speck. Okay, right. Um, and then, of course, well, mm, yeah. You know what they are. You know what they are. We all get given them as gifts. Hi, caramba. Then we've got to keep them alive. Um, but we'll give you a few tips uh, that I will definitely share with you. Um, so, right. Um, let's get on to the next thing, guys. <coughs> Excuse me for a second. Right. Colors and patterns, the world is your oyster. There are so many beautiful plants. In terms of light requirements, generally, when we're looking at, at indoor plants, they're broken up into different. There's the low light, the medium light, and the high light. Okay, we touched on variegation, on how that alters with the light. And um, in terms of the plants that I've just showed you, those ones with the speckles in the leaves, with anything where there is color, texture, uh, change in pigmentation, you rather want a medium light for that. Understood? Medium light. Very importantly, these are called indoor plants. Okay. But, but God never made them as indoor plants. They come from the jungle. All right, they come from the jungles and then they've been adapted to fit into our lifestyle. So we kind of get an idea then of, of what we're looking at. So it's all about light. That's what they need. Direct sun. Direct sun is a no-no. Okay, it is a no-no because if you've taken your plant and put it on a, on a stoop, on the patio, direct sun, it's going to smash down on it and it's going to cause browning of the leaves, yellowing of the leaves, and it's, the plant is going to take a long time to recover. So always consider the light and always ask the guys at Builders, this is an alocasia, guys, where should I put it? What is the optimum conditions for it? Which is very, very important in order for you to get the best. The other thing with indoor plants is air circulation. Okay, it's important that wherever you put the plant, that you don't shove it up into the corner. Okay, that you don't like push it right into the corner. Rather pull it away slightly so that there can be a bit of air movement around the plant. When there's air movement, your plant is going to be happier and healthier. Where there's limited air movement, that's often when you find the plant gets stressed. And when the plant is stressed, you're going to get hohos and nunus coming along to invade them. Okay, so air circulation is important. If it is raining, oh, 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 if it is raining, do not do this. Do not. Oh, babe, it's raining outside. Oh, let's let the plants get some water. 
And then you take the plants and off you do go and you run and you put them outside and the rain falls down on them and they're getting some lovely acid rain. Um, and then the next day uh, you're off to work and they're still sitting outside and you forget about them and they get sunburned. They are like a Scottish lad coming to Durban Beach and he gets toasted. And I mean roasted. And that's exactly what we do to our plants. Um, oh, I, forget, I forgot to mention this guy, anthuriums. Um, oh man, have you seen the colours that are available? Uh, just spectacular. And what, what I love about them, when we've had them in, in the house, um, and they last in the house for months. I mean months and months and months. Um, when we finished with them, all we do is we take the plant, and we go pop it into the shade garden. Um, uh, we pop it in. Also, they make lots of babies. And look here. Here are babies all on this one. I mean, I could divide this. There's a baby there. Hmm. There's another baby right there. Can you see that? And how do we know it's a baby? Because the tail, 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 tail sign is there's its little air root starting. Okay. Can you see it? Starting right over there. So you can also make babies from them. Um, but really tough. I love the colours and, and so incredibly easy to look after. Oh my goodness, I forgot this one. Oh, the bonsai people are going to hit me when I show this. Uh, but this is called a pseudo bonsai. Guys, it's not really a bonsai. It's a pseudo bonsai. Um, and it's um, known as the ficus ginseng. It's given to many dads last weekend as a bonsai, as a Father's Day gift. Um, and uh, they're really easy to look after. They're incredibly easy. Dark leaf, very dark leaf. Um, you can also prune them and shape them if you want to, um, to, to keep the right size. And they, they really are easy. A watering once every 10 days, a bit of plant food, which we'll get into a little bit later. And importantly, they can actually do in quite a lot of sun if you gradually move it out there in a few weeks, or it can do in medium light, not, not dark, not dark, 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 please. Okay, so this is the ginseng. My, 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 um, my bonsai friend and I, in fact, she saved on my phone as bonsai Lin. Um, we fight about the ficus ginseng. It's like, oh, how's your new bonsai? Because she's a bonsai purist. It's like I'm going fishing. I just bait her. Um, but anyway, that's the ficus, guys. All right. Um, let's get on to soil and watering. Oh. Now, one thing with an indoor plant is that it cannot live in this pot or whatever pot that you have infinitum. It cannot. Here is a beautiful little bird's nest fern. It cannot live here forever. It, it's, it's just like us. The gene pan size changes. Um, you know, so the, the, the plant needs to move on. It's going to get bigger. Um, and as, as soon as we start restricting it, um, it generally starts losing condition. Um, it starts getting stressed. You find you're having to water it more often because it dries out. We forget to water it or we overwater it um, and then it dies. Okay, so it's at this point that we can help the plant out. Just as a tip, when you buy an indoor plant, what's the date today? What is today? The 23rd. When you buy an indoor plant, just this is a tip for you because I know you guys buy lots of plants. And when you get it, you're like, oh, when did I buy this again? So when you get it, write the date on the pot that you buy it so that you can then have an indication of how old it is, how many months it's been in the pot, when you need to then feed it. Um, so if we're the 23rd, um, write the 23rd, okay. Write the date on there so that when it comes to repotting or whatever, you can pick it up and say, ah, oh, it's been in here for five years. <laughs> something needs to go, something needs to happen, you know. Okay, you must be suffering. Um, so how do we also know? We know when plants start losing vigor, 
that they really are needing to be transplanted. So let's take a look at this guy. Oh, look here, look here, look here, look here. Okay. Okay. What is the signs of? Too much water. Too much water. When you pull your plant out like this, there is minimal root growth on the top. Minimal root growth. It's not going all the way down. There is no um, white roots. There are no white roots. And as an example, I'm going to show you. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Ah, ah, happy plant. Do you see this? Happy plant. Look at those beautiful roots. That is a happy plant. This, can you see? Unhappy. White roots, feeder roots, these are the roots that take up the plant's nutrition um, that are there to feed it. Okay, so let's take a look at how we deal with this. Guys, and when it comes to potting on your plant, there are various um, mixes and everybody has their different look and feel that they want to use. Um, this is what I use, um, guys, and... We, We've used it and we've altered it and changed it slightly over the years. Um, but this is what we are happiest with when transplanting um, an indoor plant. And I'm going to show you very, very quickly how to do it and what is in here. Um, so, guys, we've got a beautiful terracotta pot that we are going to transplant it into. Now, the other thing that we have is as follows. So let's go through it very quickly. We have got some good potting soil, okay? So this is a garden master potting soil that you will pick up at your local builders. It's a potting soil, it's got bark in it, it's got a bit of river sand in it, which helps for drainage. Um, that's gonna be good stuff, but it's not enough. Okay, it's not enough. So what I do is we take a bit of that, we add in a bit of vermiculite. So let's say, okay, because you are gonna ask this question. Let's say it's a five liter bucket of soil. That's a five litre. This is how much of the other stuff I'm going to add. Okay, right. So I'm going to add in three handfuls of vermiculite. Vermiculite helps for water absorption and it's a strange thing. We want water but we also want drainage um, for those in between times. So it's that balance that we're looking for. Perlite, so important. Perlite, very lightweight great for drainage and in here I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five handfuls, okay, five handfuls of perlite and then also just for fluffiness, for aeration, um, also for holding water, I'm going to put in three handfuls of palm peat. Palm peat, you know, comes in that block, okay, um, which we use for sowing seed in so I'm going to add that, and I'm missing one thing. I'm missing some plant food, some pellets. Um, can someone give me that bag over there? Uh, give me that 315 there. Um, folks, whilst you have this opportunity now, and you are... Yeah, thank you. Ta. When you have the opportunity to, to prepare your own soil mix, please do add in some nutrition. Okay, remember, this is a sterile mixture. Okay, your potting soil is sterile. Um, it might have a little bit of, of, of nutrition in it, but it's not packed with nutrition. So into this, two handfuls of organic 315 that I'm using here. Okay, then a good mix. And you can keep this. You know, you can keep this in, in here, or if you don't use it all, then pop it into a Tupperware or something, or one of those big gym boxes so that when you do want to plant something up, you've, um, you've got it ready. Okay, so here's our mix. Can you see, can you see, can you see? Look here, look here. Oh, doesn't it just look good? Yes. Okay, right, now, very quickly, bottom of the hole. Okay, bottom of the hole. I'm putting in just a little piece of shade cloth and that stops the soil from Hansel and Gretling and escaping through the drainage hole. Okay, right, pop that there. 
Very easy, guys. Fill in with a bit of our soil. With our soil mix. Take our plant, Shane. Take our plant. Have a look. Any dead leaves, remove them. Oh, and here's a good thing. Let me show you this. Because I get asked this a lot as well. I'm going to come right up to Mason here. People ask, tell me their bird's nest fern or their fern has got a disease. It's got brown things on the back. Okay. Those, my friends, are spores. That is how ferns reproduce. These little brown things here, okay, if I rub my hand on it, if I rub my finger on it, I'll actually be removing the spores. This is the way the reproduction takes place. Okay, so it's not a disease. Your, your plant is actually trying to make more babies. All right, so back to here. All right, we're going to check our level. Perfect. Remember, never bury the plant deeper than its original soil level. Right, in there. Pop it in, guys. Hold its leaves up if you can, and then fill in. Okay, fill in. There we go. Fill in, fill in, fill in, fill in. Use the back end of your trowel. Firm it in. Oh, this baby's going to be so happy. Mm. If I listen. You must, hear this. you must hear what it's saying. It's very happy. It's almost crying. Um, okay, firm this down. Right, never fill your pot all the way to the top, please. Never fill it all the way to the top. Give it a bit of a bang, bang. All right, can you see? There's the level of the soil. There is the lip. There always is a little lip over there, so when you do water it, the water actually stays in the pot and drains all the way through. Um, don't fill it right to the top because then when you start watering, it goes over. Okay, right, let's just clear this deck here a bit because I'm about to lose my computer under the soil. Um, but guys, that is general transplanting. Um, it's really easy. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, really don't overcomplicate it. Right. Okay, so that is that um, on how to transplant. Let's talk about watering. Let's talk about watering. And I'm going to include watering and feeding at the same time because they are two things that should be done simultaneously to save you time. Okay, so it's very simple. In our household, we have um, one rule. And the bath is used for two things, three things actually. One, it's used for us to bath in. Number two, it's used to wash the dogs in. And number three, we use it to feed and water the plants. Okay, so put the plug in and let's imagine that this is our bath. Okay, let's imagine this is the bathtub. Um, and what we do is we fill it up and... Um, and uh, it used to say palm peat. Right. We fill it up and then we add our plant nutrition into it. Now, in terms of plant nutrition, guys, I'm going to show you various options. And um, you can go ahead and make your decision. We always use these. Um, this is a nutri stick. It is a plant, slow release plant stick. Okay. And, and I call, the, this is like, the, the, this is the lazy gardener. But you know, I like it as a backup. Um, and we always have these. Um, under the kitchen sink, um, and literally pull them out, and you see they come in these little sticks, all right? Um, it's a high nutrition. It's an NPK, nitrogen, phosphate, potassium, NPK plant food. And all you do is this. You take these guys, depending on the size of the pot, and look here, you just take it, and you just push them in there. One on that side, to the level of the soil, plant sticks. Uh, we use malt this, um, and it all does the job. But the important thing is, feeding plants and watering plants, well, more importantly, feeding plants, um, it's like a diet. Every diet works, whether it's the watermelon, the peanut, I mean, who knows what diets are out there? Um, they all work, as long as you stick to it. Okay, these plant foods work. They work. Incredible, multi-grow. 
Kelpak, a great little pick-me-upper, okay? Nutrisol, brilliant. They work as long as you use them, okay? Once is not going to make it a rock star. Okay, we've got a question. African violets, please. I struggle to keep them alive. African violets, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Um, it's Mai, Mai. Is that how I say your name? Mai, Mai Angie. Okay. African violets like dappled light, filtered light. African violets grow at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. That's where they're from. Forests. Forests. Think about that. Um, soft underfoot. Filtered, dappled light. Most people put them on their kitchen windowsill. That's fine if it's getting filtered light, not direct harsh sun. When you water an African violet, you water it from the base. That's why everybody and your grannies had them in saucers. Because they watered the saucer. And then the plant, the African violet, sucks up the nutrition because it's from a jungle. Boggy. Almost boggy conditions. Yet, it needs to be well drained at the same time. So you need that mixture that I spoke about. You water it with tepid water, lukewarm water. Lukewarm water, pop it into a little Tupperware or something, lukewarm water, leave it there for about an hour, let it suck up the lukewarm water, and then remove it. And it needs food. It needs food. African violets are also very susceptible to mealybug, but I'm going to touch on that in a couple of minutes. Um, Elisma. Elisma, tell you which indoor plant works best in a bathroom? <gasps> Anything that I have shown you here, anything, I mean bathrooms, ah, oh, oh, another thing that's good for bathrooms, okay, air plants, air plants are spectacular, you know, I mean you can hang them in a macrame, you can, you can tie them up with a face mask and hang them off your shower, um, uh, these work beautifully, any of your bird's nest ferns are brilliant for bathrooms, your peace lily, your cast iron plant that I spoke about. Bathrooms, um, you go wild. I'm often asked, how do I water um, a, a air plant? It's very simple, guys. Once every 10 days or so, um, you know, that bathtub that we, that we filled up, we simply take the, the air plants, because we've got lots in our bathroom, and we throw it in the bath. And we leave it there. And we leave it there for about an hour. It rehydrates. We then take it out, give them a bit of a shake, and in this process, we're taking off the dust, plus we are giving it nutrition. But remember, as I mentioned, we've got to add nutrition to this. So I'm going to go with some multi-grow. Guys, it's very simple to use. It's one cap into five liters of water. Right. Nice and easy. Give it a bit of a... Give it a bit of a swish. And the reason why we like using the bath or a container like this is because we're not wasting water, okay? And we're not wasting our plant food. So you take the plant, you take it out, 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 I repeat, out of its container, of its pot cover, or whatever pretty cover you have bought, and you put it inside the bath, okay? And then you give it a little water. Now, you could do it this way as well, which we often do is that we then have a little watering can. So we glug up some water. Obviously, this is quite difficult to get the watering can in. The bath is much easier. Glug up some water into here. Notice the spout, guys. Notice the spout. It's a single spout, okay? This makes watering indoor plants so much easier. These watering cans with the rose, okay? You know what happens to them. And I'm going to show you very quickly when you're trying to water something that's a small pot, and you don't want to get the water everywhere else. No, not so smart, eh? Hey? Okay, not so smart. So what I do recommend that you do is you use, get yourself one of these. So we're watering. We water, we water. We can clean the leaves as we're going along. Ah, a little spa day, hey? You want gel, gel nails or something else? So it gets a little, a little watering, we water it, we water it, we let it drain through, we leave them there for about an hour. Think of it, they're now just getting all this nutrition into them, getting it all in there, 
take them out or just let that water run out or we take that water out sometimes and use it in the garden and then you drip dry them literally and then put them back inside their pot holder. Another thing that I want to suggest to you at this point is to look at the leaves guys. Look at the leaves of your plants, especially something like um, the Aspidistra, especially your, your longer leaves. So let's go into this corner over here and I want to show you um, something else that really needs to be done with indoor plants. Come along here. Um, guys, this Aspidistra, the cast iron plant, bigger leaves, obviously bigger surface area, they can collect dust. There's dust all around us, especially in our homes, vacuum cleaner, dogs, whatever. Look at, this is a microfiber um, cloth. We get these from builders. I think you buy them in packs of four or five or something. They are fabulous. Um, and it's very, very soft. You dab it with um, a bit of water. And then all I want you to do is just give these leaves a nice wipe. And look at these. Look at all that dirt that's coming off. Dust, dust. Remember, when there's dust on leaves, it's going to stop the plant from photosynthesizing properly. We're closing its pores, its stomata. Um, there's going to be a film over, which means um, photosynthesis can't take place as optimally as it should. Um, and remember, these plants in the jungle would normally get rained on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And they're not getting rained on because they are indoor plants. So give them a wipe down. If you've got one of those little hand sprayers at your shower or at your basin, then give them a hand spray as well. It will really, really help them. Okay, so that is watering, guys. Um, what I also want to touch on, let's just move this little baby out. Oh, look at that. Look at that all coming out there. Much happier. Give him a dunk. Okay, right. And let's put him back. Okay. Now, orchids. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm going to do this very quickly, guys. Orchids, yes, um, you can keep them alive. Uh, most certainly you can. Medium light, water them often, often, guys, um, because they literally are grown in some bark because they don't need to grow in soil. It's bark. There are its roots. So it needs often water. It needs a lot of um, moisture. So take them, dunk them. Sometimes they need a bit of help to stand up, but once they get a bit of moisture in there, and do that often, guys, like every second, third day. The other thing that these plants need, Phalaenopsis, is they need humidity. On the high felt, you don't have humidity, guys. So one quick way of creating your own humidity for this plant is to do this. And you can see we did that right over here. Have a look. We've got a tray. And in the tray, we've used some of these little leaker clay pellets, which is called brocatoni. You get them in little packets at your local builders. And they come in all different colors. Pop it into a tray with a little bit of water, and then you simply put your plant on top of it. Okay? So you put your plant on top of it, and then that creates a little humid environment. Um, for your Phalaenopsis orchid and it, it will be happy. If these guys are kept well watered and looked after, they will flower for literally six, seven, eight, nine weeks. Nine weeks, okay? A couple of things we need to remember, if I can find my scissors, here we go, um, that when the plant starts going over, like this one over here, he's starting to go over. Look down the stem, guys. Do you see there? Do you see? There's a little node. Further down, there's another node. Just above the node, cut it. Whilst the stem is still green, obviously. Do you see that? It's green, okay, all right. What's gonna happen now, that is gonna reshoot. That is gonna reshoot and give you another flower. Okay, they can last, guys. I promise you they can. And most importantly, if you want them to continue to flower and do well, you need to get some of these things. Now, this is flowering orchids and this is growing orchids. All right, so this you would use to bring them into flower, okay? And this you would use to make them grow, okay? So after flowering, you want them to grow a bit. So you're going to use that. And then you're going to switch to making them flower. Okay, very simple. Last you a long time. 
and you dilute it into a bit of water and off you go. Right. Um, I think I'm going to do the competition now before I go into pests um, and diseases to give people a chance to, um, uh, to send the answers in. So I think I might do that right now. But I'm first trying to clear the deck a bit here. Um, so, drum roll. Let's recap. Let's recap what you could win. Head shear. Garden truck. Big bag for collecting waste. Leaves to go into your compost heap. Three tier grow house. Host pipe. Window box. Seeds. Beautiful stainless steel. Fork trowel. Cultivator. The most awesome weeding tool in the world. If you've never had one of these, you will be sorry. Not only can it be used for marshmallows because it's stainless steel, it really is a good weeding tool because as you get in there to whatever you're going to weed, this thing here forms resistance against the soil and then it actually pulls the weed up. Yeah, very, very cool. Anyway, um, scissors, secateurs, pots, oh, oh, everything, everything. Okay, and the question is, listen up. What is the question? Which brand? Which brand of garden hamper are we giving away today? Which brand of garden hamper are we giving away today? And if you need a clue, if you need a clue, I'm not giving you one at all. Nothing at all. Which brand? Okay, anyway, that's enough. I'm now going to go on to um, how to look after the hojos and the bad guys. And... Uh, I look forward to seeing when the first one comes through. Now, if your plant's looking a bit sick, um, if your plant's looking a bit sick and a bit out of sorts, uh, we always have this on hand, guys. It's called Root Pro. It is a soil inoculant. You inoculate the soil. You can mix it with your plant food, okay, in the bath. You get three little sachets in here, literally one sachet into five liters of water, Dunk your plant in it, and this is a good fungus. It's called Trichoderma, which protects the healthy roots of your plants and protects it against Phytophthora and other bad fungal diseases, which are often the cause of a lot of rot in seedlings, dying back, and in your indoor plants. Oh my word, hey, stop the bus! Stop the bus. Where is she? Nell Marie Fulun. Nell Marie Fulun. Uh, you are the winner. I'm reading it up there. Give me that piece of paper so I can hold it up and see. Stay where you are, Mason. Um, this was our first correct answer that came through. Now, Marie Fillion, well done. Congratulations. You are the winner of this amazing hamper valued at 2,400 rand. Ronce. Ronce, I tell you. I'm going to put your name over here because now, Marie, this is yours. Um, I am going to wish you from Garden Master and from Builders many, many, many happy, happy gardening days ahead. Right, before we end off, um, I want to just show you problems, pests and diseases, guys. And uh, Exhibit A, we told you it was tough. It's not even dying and it's full of scale. This white stuff, that's quite hard to touch when, when you touch it. it. It's firm. It's firm. It's not that fluffy stuff. They're two different things. This is scale, all right? The fluffy white stuff that looks like cotton woolly, that's mealy bug. Those are generally the two things that will affect your indoor plants. Scale and mealy bug. How do you treat them? Well, the first thing is to keep your plants happy. Keep them happy and healthy. Clearly, this one is not being kept happy and healthy and which is why it becomes susceptible, much like us. Um, how do you treat them? We use these guys. It's very simple. It's in ready-to-use format, so we don't have to mix. We don't have to do anything. Guys, the one is called Garden Gun. The other one is called No More Insects. Um, it's got a little lever over here. You simply just turn it, spray it on, spritz, 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 spritz. Generally, two or three applications would be more than enough. Of course, you could also wipe it off. Okay, you could wipe it off with a cloth. 
but we found you never really get rid of all of them. Um, the plant is lacking in something, so check at that date when you bought it and remember when last you fed it to perk it up and give it a bit of vuma. It's like when you're feeling, feeling a bit down and you need a bit of a boost. Um, some of us go for a vitamin B injection in, our, in, in Java, in our bums, and uh, it helps to pick you up and help your immune system. Well, that's exactly the same as when we are feeding plants. So it's, it's a journey, guys, and you will learn more every single day. Um, you really will. One thing that I did fail to tell you was remember when wanting to create humidity, a good misting just around the plant also is a great way to create humidity. Have one of these little guys. Great fun as well. Oops, my computer. Right, okay. Anyway, guys, um, that really is the 101 on indoor plants and, and jungles. Um, there are so many options for you. Uh, please, if you are starting out on this journey, um, take it easy, take it slowly, be kind to yourself, okay, be kind to yourself. Um, remember guys that um, you can also, if you're needing a bit more inspiration, is that you can get hold of my very own magazines at your local builders. This is Grow to Eat and it's exactly what it says, Grow to Eat, it's a seasonal gardening guide of what you can grow, what you can sow, how to harvest it, and most importantly, yummy, yummy recipes, and how to preserve them as well. Our latest issues of The Gardener and Detainee are out. Guys, what you see here, me, is in here, is in these pages. So any information, detailed, in-depth, sowing, planting, landscaping ideas, um, solutions to small spaces, keeping your lawn green, and... Uh, and how not to kill plants. It's all in here, plus loads of more inspiration. So please do go out and look for your copy of The Gardener in Detainee. Um, folks, what's last up for me to say is that if you are wanting to learn more about indoor plants or just any gardening in general, please do go along to the Builders YouTube channel and have a look at their playlists. There are loads of great videos. There's also great blogs that can teach you more, whether on how to look after a, a, a orchid, a bit more in-depth, what to sow now, how to prune, how not to prune. Um, it's all there, guys, so please go in and, and have a look. I'm, I'm sure that you will find something um, that you've been yearning to understand. Um, so check out the blogs and the Builders YouTube channel, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Um, remember, we'll answer all your questions a bit later because I see a few more have come through. And um, lastly, thank you for lending me your ears and your hearts for the last hour. Um, remember to pray for rain. And remember to be kind and gentle um, to those around you because we don't know what they're going through. Um, and uh, you can never have enough plants. So just go and buy more. And if you're having a bad day, um, in fact, I will tell you the story. I was having to have budget meetings a few Mondays ago, and I was having a really bad day. And it was one of those Mondays. It was blue. It was so blue. And I was like, I'm over this. I can't do this. So I said, I'm going out. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to buy plants. <laughs> I literally, I got in my bucky. I went <laughs> and I bought plants. It's, it fills your soul. It lifts your spirit. Um, and I cannot tell you what it does um, to my life, and I know it can do the same for yours. Um, God bless you all, and most importantly, happy gardening. Till next time, take care.